Well, what do you know? Turns out there was already a script for a New God spinoff of the Snyderverse. Oh, yeah. Well, here we are in the Twitterverse. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, Aaron Michael Johnson, it reads, told Moldiversity which I guess is a podcast, I'm not familiar with it, but anyway, that his original New God script was supposed to be tied to Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman and Zack Snyder's Justice League. He wanted to tell a Lord of the Rings-style mythological epic diving in deep into Jack Kirby's fourth world. And there's Darkseid taking a dump. Um, and the idea of Lord of the Rings kept coming up over and over again, and you can see elements of that in uh, the Snyder Cut. Uh, streaming now on HBO Max. And um, that dark side kind of operated as like like a Sauron type uh, villain for an overall spiraling, you know, grand epic tale that uh, goes beyond Justice League. Justice League would have their story, of course. But New Gods itself is more than capable of being its own franchise, uh, which seems to be one of the uh, stumbling blocks that came along when they brought Jeff Johns in to want to separate it out from all of this, even though he wouldn't have needed to. Uh, he said it would give us a glimpse into the fall. It says, or Ares, but I think they mean of. Of Ares. Yeah, remember that? When he wiped out all the other gods and the uh, Amazons had to escape to their invisible island and all that stuff. Um, we could have weaved that into this story. Ares teams up with Uxes. That's uh, Darkseid's real name. Yeah, yeah. To kill the old gods with Uxes absorbing their power through the Omega effect. Ares is cast, cast out of Olympus by Zeus, but Uxes then kills Zeus, increasing his power. This is all narrated by Metron. Yeah, Metron's an important deal. I, uh, I kind of thought that maybe they should have weaved him in to the whole uh, DCEU thing. Uh, that was leading to... Uh, uh, Bruce Wayne having his premonitions and stuff about uh, the nightmare world and all that. Of course, you know, Barry Allen's uh, messing with the timeline uh, kind of figures into that to explain how he's able to get these dreams of the future. Um, but anyway, yeah, that would that's a really cool uh, device of Metron because Metron would know everything. Yeah, he, he sure does. So... Uh, it, you, you you go off into this. You see Dark Side stuff through Justice League. Hey, what's all that about? Well, here's this other franchise we got. See, you, that's how you expand on that. Uh, plus, uh, they all uh, in New Gods. They're called New Gods. Well, who are the old gods? <laughs> well, here's one. <laughs> uh, it kind of plays in, although technically speaking, it contained within itself as uh, for the most part, a New Gods came across like that that it was its own story that being said superman immediately was involved with the forever people so for right off the bat it was incorporated into the dc universe so but the old gods would have been the gods who uh fought the great war that split the original planet into the two that became apocalypse and new genesis and all that so uh might not necessarily have involved the likes of zeus and Ares and all that but for the purposes of adaption, which is always the case, uh, this is a cool little weaving in of it and pays tribute to those original stories. And, uh, you know, that they would under... Uh, Dark Side's a god and Zeus is a god. And, they, you know, there's kind of a similar thing there. And this sort of thing happens all over the universe. <laughs> and that's how you can work that out. But anyway, Metron would guide us through... It's just... Yeah, the right, yeah, I, yeah, I do it too. You know, it happens. I think he means us. Through the origins of the new gods, Darkseid's origins, Isaiah, a.k.a. High Father, the great battle of New Genesis. Yeah, New Genesis gets no love in any of this. Here would be a chance to get that whole story. Uh, we would see Darkseid riding a giant hellhound. <laughs> a good boy. As his steed with his army ready to destroy New Genesis. And uh, there's a drawing of High Father. Uh, Darkseid believes that if he can destroy the source of life itself, <laughs> geez, uh, then it would lead him to the anti-life equation. Of course, if you destroy all life, what's the point, you know? Of course, it is called anti-life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had uh, the original Four Furies, uh, that would include Big Marta, uh, Calabac, and the fight gets so bad that the source separates them. So the source moves in 
to bring an end. That's part of the uh, New God story, is that there was this giant cosmic war that actually Yuke says, or Darkseid manipulated into happening, uh, happening and uh, manipulated Steppenwolf into causing it. And they finally have to come to this deal between uh, him and Highfather. So, uh, he, so he had all these other characters in there, and uh, Metron is just sitting back and watching it all. That's what he does. Uh, Darkseid and Isaiah look to Metron for an answer. Darkseid and Isaiah uh, bring their sons, Scott and Orion, for the trade. So they trade sons, and this is one of these impossible things. <laughs> things he's like, how could you see I thought is a good guy when he does this? But the fate of all life was at stake, and this was the only deal that Darkseid would take. I, it doesn't quite spell out why he would do this, uh, why he, he wanted uh, Isaiah's son who becomes Mr. Miracle and uh, ultimately marries Big Barda. They become lovers and all that, and it's all sweet. Um, uh, he becomes scot-free. <laughs> Mr. Miracle, the ultimate escape artist, get it? And all that stuff. Uh, well, whereas Orion become, takes his place as a High Father's son, but he isn't really High Father's son. He's Dark Side's son. And there's the conflict for Orion, who has uh, all his father's uh, aggression and uh, almost beastal nature. Well, his his mother was a pretty beastal nature woman <laughs> in this arranged marriage that Darkseid was forced into by his own mother. Boy, it's a long-winded story. It could be literally the uh, Game of Thrones meets Star Wars uh, saga that they could do, preferably with a better ending than Game of Thrones. But nevertheless, they could have done that. I guess they were thinking perhaps that at some point, but keep it separate and whatnot. And maybe they were upset are thinking, I mean, I, it's never mentioned that the whole Orion story is pretty similar to Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, you know, because his real father is dark side and all that, but au contraire, <laughs> new gods predate Star Wars, and when you look at dark side and you look at uh, Apocalypse and it's all the imagery and all the source <laughs> and the fact that the, the, the hero's father is the villain, yeah, George Lucas borrowed an awful lot. Didn't he? He sure did. Um, it wasn't just Flash Gordon, Lord of the Rings, which he borrowed heavily from that too. But anyway, so Darkseid and Isaiah look to Metron for the answer. They do the sun's trade. Uh, this is when we meet a young Barda teaching Scott about Apocalypse. Granny Goodness, who we did see briefly in Justice League, introduces herself to Scott. Uh, and that's just the prologue. <laughs> So uh, it gets into the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, but by the way, Aaron then revealed that while Warner Brothers loved his script and told him they were moving forward, shortly after Zack Snyder stepped away from Justice League 2017, they told him to remove connections from the Snyderverse. Uh, they had him remove references from Earth events and uh, Steppenwolf. I'm guessing Steppenwolf would still be in the story. Probably wouldn't look like that, and uh, but it wouldn't have anything to do with what uh, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League had. So they had him remove things about Orion's parentage. Ah, here we go. Orion's parentage. Yeah. You see? I mean, it's like... Man, it's just this stupid thing. I mean, it's like... I, Disney, whatever, Lucasfilm can't sue you over that. It's quite the other, op uh, 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 the other way around. You know, New Guys was first. Oh, boy. How do you do the trade story? You know, which is at the heart of the whole New God story about the sons being swapped. And, you know, come on. Uh, so the parentage had to be removed. Step, okay, no Steppenwolf. Uh, Tigra, well, that's that's Orion's mother. Uh, the betrayal, Desaad was referencing in Zack Snyder's just Okay, so Steppenwolf's betrayal. No, no, I can't. <laughs> and hints of Berta potentially being an Amazon. Okay. Apparently they hint at this, and that's a way to make it more cohesive and whatnot. That is not the original story about her, but it could be, you know, that she gets abducted by the new gods and recruited to be their, you know, badass enforcer for the Furies, um, which is sort of like Darkseid's Praetorian Guard, but I, they wanted that removed. Aaron says that Justice League <laughs> and the shakeups at Warner Brothers in DC are creating a shift in how New Gods could be approached as potentially its own thing disconnected. You could do it both. You really could. He stated getting script notes from someone who actually knew about the New Gods source material. The theory was that since Jeff Johns became head of DC Films, he was possibly the one giving notes. So he wanted to craft it closer 
to what it originally is. And I can understand that. But even when you try to do that, it's not going to be entirely uh, the same. None of these are. As close as they get. You know, it's like Iron Man. That's pretty much, top to bottom, the origin story of Iron Man. Except it doesn't take place in Afghanistan. It doesn't involve any of that. It was actually in Vietnam. Though they say a South Asian country, but it was pretty obvious what it was. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. You, you, you're shifting roles here and there. But that's about it. But in the end... It's the same story. And uh, everybody loved it, you know. Wonder Woman, same thing. Pretty much her origin story. Uh, Steve Trevor crashes on uh, Paradise Island. Uh, he meets Wonder Woman. Uh, there's an attraction immediately. And she wants to help him in his fight against the forces of evil in World War II. Yeah, see, that's the big difference. They changed it to World War One. Okay, fine. Uh, for reasons, you know, Captain America had already come out and stuff like that. And so... Just a little change here and there, and it all works out. So there you go. Uh, you still have the same story, which is a big reason why Wonder Woman was one of their most successful films for the DCEU, uh, because it did uh, stay loyal as best it could to the source material. You can still do that, even with some of these changes here. So whatever, uh, they were, uh, whether it was Jeff Johns or Warner Brothers themselves, uh, making those changes. Some of that I can understand, but not in the totality where you trash everything you've already invested so much time, money, and effort into uh, to uh, derail it like that. Um, plus, I, uh, Orion's parentage is a huge part of the story. You're gonna, you, so you're not staying loyal to the source material if you get rid of that. You know, worrying about oh, Star Wars and stuff. And no. Um, it is what it is. So anyway, suddenly Aaron's Twitter was getting followed by countless random new gods accounts that were likely set up by marketing. <laughs> See, <laughs> not all is as it appears in uh, Twitterverse, is it? No. He was getting congratulations from numerous people, even someone from Marvel. Aaron haven't, hadn't even announced his script publicly yet. Yeah, that's an interesting little thing, but uh, kind of more confirmation of what you already know about how Twitterverse is used by these studios. Anyway, here's where it gets messed up. <laughs> Aaron's script reader told him he had a great idea, a great script, but he didn't have a producer or director attached. He then ghosted Aaron. This was January 2018. Two months later. <laughs> yeah. And where did that end up? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Huh. Well, there you go. So, was it ever going to get made? I don't know. It's hard to tell. But it seems more organized and fitting for a shared universe approach. That, uh, and I mean, good lord, the, the dark side's appearance in this was, man, you, <laughs> you'd want to build on that. But, um, uh, well, it, it didn't happen, and, uh, Probably won't. Anyway, there you go. There's a little something. Thanks for watching and listening. Say, while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends, yes. Also, check out my many stores <laughs> in the link description below, yes, where you can get t-shirts, hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh, yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Joe, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh, my goodness. So many places to watch me and my stuff. Oh, yeah. And if that's not enough for you, well, you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal, Mr. Nelson.